Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another modern gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at the Neoform Allosaurus Rider combo deck featuring four copies of Neoform from War of the Spark, a two mana sorcery that says as an additional cost to cast a spell, sacrifice a creature, and then we get to search your library for a creature card with convert mana cost equal to one plus the sacrifice creature's convert mana cost. And it also comes with a plus one plus one counter on it. And similar to Neoform, we also have four copies of Eldritch Evolution. And the goal of the deck is to sacrifice an Olosaurus Rider, which is a 7 mana 1-1 one, one, that says you can exile two green cards from your hand rather than pay the spell's mana cost. And the Rider's power and toughness are each equal to 1 plus the number of lands we control. But we don't really care about the Rider's power and toughness, we just care that it costs 7 mana. And we can cheat it in play just by exiling two green cards from our hand and then sacrifice it to either Neoform or Eldritch Evolution to search up a copy of Gristlebrand, 8 mana for a legendary creature demon that's a 7-7 with flying and lifelink, and we can pay 7 life to draw 7 cards, and thanks to cards like Nourishing Shoal gaining us a ton of life, we can very quickly draw our entire library with Gristlebrand, and then the win conditions can either be a Laboratory Maniac or a Lightning Storm finishing off the opponent. So let's take a look at our entire decklist. At 1 mana we've got the full 4 copies of Serum Visions, providing a bit of card selection and consistency to the deck. We also have one copy of Wild Cantor as kind of a mana creature in a weird way. It can also help us filter the red mana we get from exiling a semi spirit guide into green or blue mana for casting a Neoform. And if we cast it on turn one, it just helps us ramp on the following turn by sacrificing it to add one mana of any color to our mana pool. And then we've got four copies of Simeon Spirit Guide, which we can use to ramp out an Eldritch Evolution ahead of schedule, or we can filter the red mana into green or blue mana thanks to Wild Cantor or thanks to Mana Morphos. And once we do draw our entire library, we can also use the Simeon Spirit Guide to cast a Lightning Storm for free, which can help us win the game on the spot. Then we've got our four copies of Mana Morphos, which mainly combines with a Simeon Spirit Guide, but also just helps us cantrip and also counts as a green spell we can exile with Allosaurus Rider. We've got one copy of a Sandwich Sprint to give target creature plus two plus one and haste until end of turn and also scry one to help us give a Gristlebrand haste. So we can just exile a Simi Spirit guy to make red mana, cast Sandwich Sprint once we have a Gristlebrand in play. So we get to attack for nine or ten damage depending on whether we have a plus one plus one counter on it with Neoform. And we can use the life we gain from that attack step to activate Gristlebrand an additional time in case we didn't find enough copies of Nourishing Shoal to keep us alive. And then we also have a single copy of Noxious Revival to get back a card from our graveyard back on top of our deck in case we need to get back one of our key combo pieces. Then we've got our four copies of Eldritch Evolution and four copies of Neoform to sacrifice our four copies of Allosaurus Rider, which we can also find thanks to Summoner's Pact, which is a zero mana green instant that lets us search our library for a green creature card and put it into our hand. And then at the beginning of our next upkeep, we have to pay for mana. If we don't, we lose the game. But of course, we plan on winning the game on the spot, so we don't need to worry about paying for the pact. And then we also have the full four copies of Chancellor of the Tangle, which if we have it in our opening hand, we can reveal it. And then at the beginning of our first main phase, add green mana to our mana pool. That extra mana can allow for some very explosive starts. If we can't quite combo off on turn one, we can maybe just use that green mana to help us cast a Wild Cantor and store that mana for the following turn. And of course, the uh, Chancellor also just counts as a big green creature in our hand that we can exile to a Nourishing Shoal to gain extra life, or just exile to an Allosaurus Rider to help us cast it on turn one. So the Chancellor does multiple things in the deck and is a very key part of the deck as well. Then we've got our four copies of Nourishing Shoal. We can exile Chancellors, the Worm, or Allosaurus Rider to gain massive amounts of life to keep comboing off and drawing cards with Gristlebrand. Then we get to our win conditions, which include one copy of Lightning Storm, which is the most straightforward one. After drawing a ton of cards with Gristlebrand, we can cast Lightning Storm, maybe through exiling a bunch of Simi Spirit Guides. Then we gotta make sure to hold priority while the Lightning Storm is on the stack. And then we can discard land cards from our hand to add additional charge counters onto the Lightning Storm. And then the Lightning Storm will deal 3 damage plus X, where X is the number of charge counters on Lightning Storm. So every additional land we discard means two additional damage with Lightning Storm. So we can very easily kill the opponent from 20 life with a single Lightning Storm, just by discarding a bunch of lands. And then our other win condition is a Laboratory Maniac, which says if we would draw a card while our library is empty, then we get to win the game instead of losing the game. And thanks to Gristlebrand and Manamorphos, we can easily draw our entire library and win the game on the spot with a Laboratory Maniac. Then taking a look at our mana base, we've got 15 lands total, including 4 copies of Botanical Sanctum coming into play untapped as one of our first 3 lands, 2 Breeding Pool as a Shock Land, 4 Gemstone Mines making 1 mana of any color, but it depletes after 3 uses, 4 Yavimaya Coast, which makes mana at the cost of 1 life, 
and then a single basic island. Then moving on to the sideboard, we've got three copies of Pact of Negation as a free counter spell to help us counter opposing counter spells. We've got a Nature's Claim to destroy artifacts or enchantments to get rid of hate cards. Two spell pierces as more cheap counter spells. Engineered explosives as kind of a catch-all answer. Echoing Truth can also bounce potential hate cards. Three copies of Chalice of the Void, which we can ramp out on turn one thanks to Chancellor and Simi Spirit Guide to lock down potential one mana cards from the opponent. And then the full four copies of Leyline of Sanctity to protect us from discard spells. And another card we can put into play without paying its mana cost. So that's the deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. All right, we're on the play. And let's take a look at our opening hands. So, don't have any Allosaurus Riders, but we do have Summoner's Bank to look for it. We've got double Eldritch Evolution to sacrifice a Rider, but the problem here is that we're pretty light on mana. We've got a Simi Spirit Guide, no lands, no Chancellors. So, I don't think this hand is functional enough, since we would need to draw a bunch of mana in the first couple turns. So, let's go to six. Alright, this hand is better. We've got two Gemstone Mines to provide mana. And then Serum Visions to look for Allosaurus Rider or a way to find Allosaurus Rider. And we've got a Neoform. Not a great hand, but I think we've got to keep this. And well, Summoner's Pact helps us find a Rider, so we'll keep it on top. And then I guess we are fine casting the Serum Visions. Gotta make sure we don't use up all the counters on the Gemstone. So what we're looking for now is additional green cards to help us cast the Allosaurus Rider. So we don't need Serum Visions, but I think we can keep the Mana Morphos as just a random green card we can exile with the Riders. Say go. Opponent on turn on Steam Vents into Serum Visions. So we should be able to combo off here. Summon our Spacts. Get Allosaurus Rider. And then we can cast a Rider. Exiling our two Monomorphos. And then we can cast Neoform for a blue and a green. Sacrifice Rider, get a Gristle Brand. And hope we don't get too unlucky and find a few Nourishing Shoals along the way. There we go. There's one of them. I guess we'll draw first in case we find a Worm, which gains more life. So we'll Nourishing Shoal, get rid of Chancellor. Activate Gristle Brand again. There's a worm we can get rid of, and another nourishing shoal. And we should be able to draw our entire deck pretty easily here. We can use the Noxious Revival to get back a nourishing shoal to make sure we draw another one. Use Gristle Brands. And then nourishing shoal again. Get rid of a worm. And just got to keep an eye on how many cards we have remaining in library. So there's two left now. And let's see if we have all the Simi Spirit Guides and the Lightning Storm. I think we do. So Exile Spirit Guide. Exile Spirit Guide. And Exile Spirit Guide. And now we just got to make sure to hold control to hold priority while we cast this Lightning Storm. Targeting the opponents and then click on the Lightning Storm and start discarding some lands. Opponent can also discard to the Lightning Storm to redirect it. Just got to make sure we don't discard all the lands here so we can keep a few in hand. All right, this should be enough. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 14, 16, 18. So we'll pass priority. And there we go. Awesome. So on to sideboarding. Don't exactly know what our opponent is up to. Blue-red could be any blue-red deck. Um, but I'm gonna assume we want Pact of Negation. We could also make a case for Chalice of the Void if they have a lot of one-mana cantrips. But of course, then we also need to consider taking out our own Serum Visions. And then uh, Spell Pierce is also a consideration. I think I'm just gonna go with Pact and Spell Pierce. And then what do we take out? Summit Sprint is usually cuttable. So I'll shave that one, shave a Wild Cantor. I'll take out some Anamorphos and maybe the Lab Maniac as well, which could die to a random Lightning Bolt. And I uh, think we'll call it a day. All right, we're on the draw now. So we've got double Allosaurus Rider. We get to make green mana with Chancellor and we've got Neoforms in hand. So all this hand needs is to draw a blue source on turn one. All our lands produce blue mana. We've got uh, 
15 lands to draw towards. If it works out, this hand's great. If, uh, if we miss, then the green mana from Chancellor goes away and we'll need to draw two mana sources to help us cast a Neoform. And we can't cast the Serum Visions without blue mana. So this hand has a lot of potential, but it's definitely a bit of a gamble on whether or not we get there. I think I'm gonna keep just because the upside is pretty high, but we could easily fail. So we'll reveal Chancellor, opponent with a turn one Serum Visions off Shivan Reef. So this could be Storm Combo. And we gotta hope for an island here. And Gemstone Mine fits the bill. So we'll add green mana, play Gemstone, cast a Rider, exiling a Neoform and a Chancellor, and then cast a Neoform for a blue and a green, get Gristlebrand, and hope we don't miss. Alright, looks like we didn't find any additional Nourishing Shoals, so we might not be able to completely combo off here. Let's just double check. We've got a Simian Spirit Guide, no way to make additional mana, so we can't cast a Manamorphose. So I think we'll have to end the combo here. Luckily we didn't have to summon our spec to find a rider, so we won't have to pay 4. And we can just try and win with Crystalbrand. But not getting to completely combo off does expose us to potential interaction next turn. I think we want to keep the means to maybe get a second Crystalbrand in play. Although we did draw the second copy, so we will have to Noxious Revival it back from the graveyard. Alright, so we'll try this. We do of course have an 8-8 Gristlebrand in play, which can also just attack and try and win the game. And if we just hit once, we get to activate Gristlebrand again. So that's a spot where if we had a Samwood Sprint, we could Exile Spirit Guide, Samwood Sprint, attack, and then maybe keep comboing off. Alright, opponent's got 2 mana. Play Sanctum, move to combat. Attack. That works, so we'll try and keep comboing off here. We've got a Pact of Negation to counter any potential counter spells. And there's our Nourishing Shoal. Get rid of a Worm. Opponent with a Remand, we'll Pact. Shoal resolves. And now we get to activate Gristlebrand a few times. And our opponent scoops it up. Awesome, so we got very lucky to draw the blue source we needed. But yeah, the deck is definitely pretty high variance in that regard. We can have very explosive turn one wins, sometimes we just fail miserably. So we got the better end of the deal in this one. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. And what about this hand? We've got a rider. Only one green card to help us cast rider. No neoforms or... Eldritch Evolutions, and only Manamorphos to help us cantrip, but if we cast Manamorphos, we're pretty low on green cards. So overall, I don't really like this. Alright, so this hand is missing all the Source Rider, or a way to find all the Source Rider, but it does have the Neoform and Evolution for Redundancy. So I think we'll keep this, and then go to look for Summoner Spact or all Source Rider, where we can bottom, and then we'll lead with the Tamped Breeding Pool. So this is a bit of a waiting game. Pretty much needs to hit a Pact or an Ola Source Rider in one of our next couple draws to have a chance. Do we want to run out Wild Cantor? We're facing blue-white control, so they could have interaction up starting from next turn, which is going to be difficult to beat. I think we'll keep the Wild Cantor in hand in case we need to cast both Neoform and Eldritch Evolution, so we have an additional green card to ditch to All Source Rider. Another Neoform, so we'll just pass a turn once again. I guess now we could consider running out a Wild Cantor, because we picked up an additional green card. The upside of not playing the Cantor is that our opponents won't necessarily know which deck we're playing, but now they should have a better idea. Opponent gets a Tapped Hallowed Fountain, and an Opt. So yeah, the problem with this deck also is that if you give the opponent more time, they'll be able to interact more with the deck, and a single piece of interaction can sometimes make our entire combo fail, which is why the deck kind of needs to be explosive and try and get those turn one or two wins. Because a single counter spell on a new form, a single removal spell on our all source rider, if we can't sacrifice it right away, is pretty disastrous. Alright, more new forms. 
Let's attack. Our opponent with land force and our encrypted command territory as well. So the first Neoform is almost definitely getting countered, which means we'll lose a ton of resources. So I don't think we're winning this game. Let's Manamorphose for, I guess, green and blue. Find a Chancellor. Doesn't do much for us. Opponent with Serum Visions. And we will probably see our opponent keeping up at least four mana for the rest of the game. So they can maybe cast multiple counter spells. Well, there's a Summoner Spect, so I guess we'll go for it. But I don't have very high confidence in this working out. So we'll get Allosaurus Rider. Cast Allosaurus Rider, exiling two green cards. Chancellor can go. And I guess Eldritch Evolution can go. And then we'll cast a Neoform, which is probably going to get countered here. But sadly, the Rider is already sacrificed. There's a Cryptic Command. So now we got to find a backup all Source Rider. Opponent turns out Narset. Opponent also finds a Surgical Extraction. So they can just surgically extract all Source Rider, and then I don't think we can win. Alright, I think we'll move on to the next one. So on to sideboarding against blue-white control. We'll bring in Pacts. We'll bring in Spell Pierces. Main next Surgical means we might want to consider Chalice of the Void. But I don't think it's quite worth it. And then we'll take out the Maniac, take out a Summit Sprint. And we'll shave some copies of Manamorphos, which is also pretty bad against Narset. Since we have to cast it in the opponent's turn if we want to draw a card. But then the mana is useless. And shave a Wild Cantor as well. And try this out. We'll be on the play. And what about this one? Seems quite good. We've got our Allosaurus Rider. Nourishing Shoal Summoner's Pack to cast a Rider. And then turn two we can cast Neoform with Pact of Negation backup. So this is pretty much the perfect hand. I guess it's not quite perfect since we're missing the Chancellor to make green mana to combo off on turn one. But can't really complain here. So let's uh, play Gemstone Mine. Say go. Don't really want to expose the Allosaurus Rider to a path to exile, so that's why we're not playing it out on turn one. Opponent says go with one mana up. But we've got the pact to beat a potential interactive spell here. So we'll cast a Rider, exiling Rider and Summoner's Pact since we want to keep the Nourishing Shoal to combo off. Cast Neoform for a green and a blue. Let's see if they have a Spell Pierce. They do. Pact a Spell Pierce. And get our Gristle Brand. And we already have a Nourishing Shoal in hand, so hopefully we won't fizzle out. Alright. Let's get rid of the Worm. I guess we should be mindful of uh, Surgical Extraction, so maybe we should have drawn the cards first, so we can make sure we can uh, cast all the Nourishing Shoals and they don't Surgically Extract them. Either way, let's just draw some cards. And then we can Nourishing Shoal. Did we draw another Worm? We did not, so we'll Nourishing Shoal, getting rid of Chancellor, so we can draw more cards. And then we'll Nourishing Shoal again. Still no Worms. Alright, there's a Worm. Do we have another Shoal? We don't. We can always Noxious Revival, a Shoal back on top of our deck. And then cantrip with Manamorphose. But we might already have enough to Lightning Storm our opponent to death here. We have a Pact as well to protect it. So yeah, I think we can go for it. Exile Spirit Guide, Exile Spirit Guide, Exile Spirit Guide. Cast Lightning Storm, holding priority. Target our opponents. And then discard some lands. And our opponent packs it up. All right. On to game three here. Any changes for game three? We're gonna be on the draw now. Could consider Chalice of the Void, which also counters Spell Pierce. And we can ramp it out on turn one thanks to Chancellor or Spirit Guide, but of course they can just Spell Pierce the Chalice. 
Um, I don't think we make any changes. All right, so we've got our Allosaurus Rider, we've got our two green cards, but we're missing Neoform or Aldrich Evolution. So if we don't find those soon, this hand doesn't really do much. Don't have any card draw or card selection here. So this one's close. Think we gotta keep and then hope. Hallowed Fountain untapped. There's Chancellor. So we'll just play the Gemstone Mine. Say go. But if we don't draw a new form or evolution within the next turn or two, I think the door's gonna close because our opponent will be able to keep up multiple interactive spells. We don't have any Pact of Negations. And I don't think Allosaurus Rider Beatdown is gonna get the job done. Of course, the opponent isn't pressuring us, so we do kind of have time to maybe find a Pact. And there's Neoform, so we would be able to combo off, but of course our opponent has three mana. They can have all sorts of interaction. And if we go for it, then it's pretty much game over. If they do have any interaction, we can beat a Spell Pierce, thanks to Simi Spirit Guide. If we wait until next turn, then Cryptic Command also becomes an issue. So I think we go for it here, and then hope for the best. So cast, exiling, Worm and Chancellor, keeping Nourishing Shoal. And then hope that their interaction is Spell Pierce and nothing else. But it's a Dovin's Veto instead, so yeah, not beating that one. Even if we had a Pact of Negation, we couldn't beat the Veto as opposed to Negate. Alright, I think it's pretty much game over now. We're just way too far behind on resources to ever try and assemble the combo again. Opponent just needs to slam down a Planeswalker and pull ahead. And opponent also with a Surgical Extraction on the Rider. Alright, so now we can pretty easily concede the game. Alright, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a decent looking hand. We've got Rider double green card, we've got Evolution. So it's not the fastest hand since we don't have Spirit Guide or Chancellor. But uh, we do have all the combo pieces, so we'll try and keep. And let's see what we're up against. Tapped Sulphur Falls and a Nourishing Shoulder draw. So we'll just play a Tap Breeding Pool. Not sure if we're cycling Manamorphos next turn or not. Could be worth it if we hit a Swim Spirit Guide, we might be able to combo off with Evolution. And there's a Spirit Guide, alright, so we would be able to combo off here. Pwn does have two mana, they could have Interaction up. I think we go for it here. So, cast a Rider, Exiling Pact and probably Manamorphose here. And then cast Eldritch Evolution. And get our Gristle Brand. And we can start drawing some cards. Already have Shoal plus Worm in hand. So let's Shoal getting rid of Worm. Draw some more cards. Now we already did use a Spirit Guide, so we'll need all the other Spirit Guides to cast a Lightning Storm. Any additional worms we can exile? No. So we'll just have to get rid of a 7 mana card. And let's see, we have another Shoal in hand. If we don't have a Shoal and we have a Noxious Revival, then we want to make sure to Noxious Revival back a Shoal, so we can redraw it. So there's a Noxious Revival, now the issue is a potential Lightning Bolt from the opponent. If we Noxious Revival back the Nourishing Shoal, then we'll be at 3, and then if we cast uh, the Nourishing Shoal from hand, then our opponent responds with Lightning Bolt, which is dead. Probably don't want to do that, and instead just uh, Shoal first, getting rid of the Worm that we just drew. And then we can pretty safely draw our entire library. And then we should have drawn all the Spirit Guides we need. If we have Spirit Guide as our last card in the deck, we can always Mana Morphos into it. We also have Samut Sprint, so we could go for a Gristle Brand attack, but then we have to get rid of a Spirit Guide. So let's just go for the Lightning Storm instead. And I imagine if our opponent did have a counter spell, they would have countered the new form instead of waiting. So hold priority, ditch a few lands. Alright, so our opponent sees the writing on the wall. On to sideboarding against blue red. Well, I think I'm just gonna sideboard the same way we sideboarded so far, bring in Pacts and Spell Pierces, take out Maniac, 
take out Cantor, take out Summit Sprint, shave on some Anamorphoses, and give this a try. Alright, we're on the draw, and this hand seems okay, we've got Rider double green card, maybe a backup Rider if they deal with the first one somehow, with Summoner's Pact. Do need to draw a blue or green source to cast a Neoform, but I think that's uh, manageable. Opponent with a tapped Steam Vents, and a Spell Pierce to pick up. So we'll play a land, say go. If we had drawn into a Mana Morphos, we could have gone for it. But we did take two out after sideboarding. Alright, there's Breeding Pool. So we could go for it, but our opponent does have two mana up. So it could be worth it to wait until we can Neoform with Spell Peter's backup. I think that's a little bit safer. And I don't want to run out all Source Rider yet, because it would die to a potential burn spell. So I think we'll play it slow here. Wait for another land drop, and if our opponent taps out, we can go for it. But I doubt it will. Blast Zone doesn't affect us much. Alright, Worm instead. So still no land. Of course, the longer we wait, the more likely our opponent will be able to cast two interactive spells, or just in general cast a more expensive interaction. But I think it's wrong to go for it here, so we'll wait. If our opponent has something like a Vendillion click, we could also be in trouble since then they get to take. The Neoform in this case, probably. Opponent with a Dictate of Crufix, alright, so they're some sort of extra turns combo deck. Well, that resolves, I think. Even though we could Spell Pierce, and then discard a Spirit Guide to hand size, I think. Even though Spirit Guide can help us fight through opposing Spell Pierces. Opponent draws extra card from Crufix, but now with the extra card we will draw, we might also draw into our extra land. Of course, Pact of Negation would be a pretty good draw as well. Alright, we're opponent with a Giga Drowse, with Replicate tapping down our permanence, so casting Spell Pierce is not going to do much. Alright, that's going to basically Time Walk us here. And Botanical Sanctum, so we get to hit our land drop at least. And then try for it next turn, and we also get to keep up Spell Pierce to maybe counter a Time Walk from the opponent. And what do we discard to hand size? Probably the Summoner's Pact at this point. Discarding Rider in the face of Surgical Extraction could be bad. I guess if we wanted to play around Surgical better, we maybe discard the Worm instead. So they can Surgical Pact and get it out of our hand. Alright, opponent goes for it, Time Warp, so we'll Spell Pierce that. And unless our opponent has any Pact of Negations of their own, we should be able to combo off next turn. Ooh, Commandeer. Wow. Well, that's the fancy version of Pact here, so your opponent gains control of our Spell Pierce. Yeah, that'll work. Well, hopefully they can keep comboing off after taking one extra turn, our opponent is down to one card in hand. So your opponent takes their extra turn, three cards in hand, hopefully no Time Walks. Alright, there's Time Warp, so they get another draw step, and an extra draw from Dictate as well. And Mikokora, another way to draw additional cards. And an Arset now as well. Finds Time Warp, but they're missing one mana to cast it. So hopefully we get a turn here, and our opponent doesn't have interaction. We know they have a Time Warp in hand, one unknown. Ooh, Surgical Extraction to Summoner's Pact, so it, that's kind of the play I mentioned. But we will still be able to cast All Source Rider, Ditching Worm and All Source Rider, and a Neoform. So it's not a disaster. Cast a Rider, Exiling Chancellor, and probably a Rider. I don't think we can survive a counter spell on Neoform anyway, so might as well get the card that gains the most life with uh, a potential Shoal. So let's Neoform. Get Gristlebrand. Although with Narset in play, we can't draw additional cards. Just have to say go and then try and attack Narset. Also, Narset plus Mikokoro is a pretty sweet combo if your opponent activates Mikokoro in our turn. They only get to draw the uh, one extra card. Same goes with Dictate, of course. Narset minuses. Fine Surgical Extraction, but our Gristle Brand is already in play. Gets rid of Spell Pierce. So now the question becomes if our opponent casts a Time Warp, do we activate Gristle Brand just to draw one extra card in the hopes of hitting exactly Pact of Negation? I think it's worth it, because every extra turn that goes by, our chances of being able to combo off diminish. 
So let's pay 7 life to draw one card. Probably not the most I've ever paid to draw one card. Alright. But uh, not a great rate. So Time Warp happens. And Howling Mine as well to combine with Dictate. Yeah, the combination of Narset and Dictate and Howling Mine effects is indeed pretty strong. Opponent casts Serum Visions. And a Crypto Command bouncing Gristlebrand. So yeah, I think it's pretty much game over now. So we've got two Allosaurus Riders left in our deck that we would have to draw. But then we still have the Narset problem. So yeah, I think we can wrap this one up and move on to game three. Where do we want to make any changes? Could consider Echoing Truth to bounce Narset. But that feels a bit slow to me. Chalice on one doesn't do much. So yeah, I think we try again and just try and be faster. And do we have a Keeper? I've got all source Rider, two green cards and a Neoform, but no mana. Outside of a Simi Spirit Guide. So we have to draw two mana sources in our first couple draws here. I guess Mana Morphos with Spirit Guide also helps, and then we just need a single land. But with only two Mana Morphos in the deck, I don't think that's likely. So I think this is a sad mulligan. And uh, don't think the sand is going to work out for lands, all source Rider. No Neoforms or Eldritch Evolutions, no green cards to exile. So down to five we go. Alright, this is potentially keepable. We've got our Summoner's Pack to find all source Rider, Eldritch Evolution to sacrifice all source Rider, and a Spell Pierce for interaction. Just need to find some green cards to ditch to the all source Rider. Well, we'll keep one on top, and then we can get rid of the Summoner's Pack. So we need a second green source to help us cast Eldritch Evolution. Might have been worth it to even just uh, keep up Spell Pierce on turn 1, but I don't expect many turn 1 plays that are must counter. So yeah, we need a second green source and then a second green card to exile to the All Source Rider. And then maybe even an extra mana source to help us cast Spell Pierce as interaction. Opponent with the tapped Steam Vents. So we'll play a land, say go. Alright, Serum Visions we can cast. Alright, so there's our green card and there's our extra mana. So now the thing we have to think about is whether or not we want to cast Spell Pierce alongside Eldritch Evolution, in which case we need a fourth mana source. So I think we bottom the Spell Pierce, top the Gemstone Mine, and of course if our opponent taps out, we Spell Pierce Narset for example, then we can try and go for it next turn, but... Um, if they keep up mana, then we can consider waiting until we have a fourth mana source to go Eldritch Evolution plus Spell Pierce. Opponent's gonna keep up three mana. There's our land, so we'll play a land, say go. And if our opponent flashes in Dictate of Crufix, I think we have to let it resolve. There's Dictates. It's definitely possible that the opponent just doesn't have a ton of counter spells in the first place and we should be going for it, but it feels a bit sketchy. Are they gonna tap down our lands again? Yep, there it is, Giga Drowse. So Giga Drowse happens. And draw our Simi Spirit Guide and Eldritch Evolution. Alright, so we don't have Spell Pierce up at this turn cycle, sadly. So we can't fight over Narset, even though they could maybe even pay for it. But uh, next turn we pretty much have to go for it, otherwise it's gonna be too late. And we do have Simi Spirit Guide, so we can cast Eldritch Evolution using Spirit Guide and still have Spell Pierce up. Who knows if that's enough. Looks like our opponent missed a land drop. So plenty of cards in hand. That could interact with our combo. Could be another Giga Drowse. Alright, we get our main phase. So yeah, I think we go for it here. Exile Spirit Guide. We'll cast a Rider. Exiling Chancellor and probably Summoner Spact. Opponent with a Remand on the Allosaurus Rider. That's okay, we can just replay it, exiling Double Evolution. Resolves, cast Neoform for a blue and a green. Should not have exiled the Simi Spirit Guide yet, but that's fine. Commandeer. Yeah, that one we can spell pierce successfully. So now our opponent resolves Neoform, and we're pretty much dead now. So we should have still had a Simi Spirit Guide in hand, not that it would matter. 
So who knows if the Spell Pierce was a Pact of Negation, if it would have been enough. Opponent still has two mana, so they could have had another interactive spell. The fact that they missed a land drop kind of implies that they have a ton of interaction in hand. And now a Surgical on Neoform. I think it's pretty much game over here. We can keep playing, but our opponent's eventually gonna win. Don't think we can assemble the combo again from this position. Alright, GG's. So we got to see the deck in action. Face a lot of interactive blue decks, which are probably not the best matchup for our deck. Even though on the flip side, if we face turn 1 Thoughtseize, that's also not great for our deck. The deck would much prefer just to play against aggressive decks, for example, where they don't have any interaction for the combo, and it's just about being as fast as possible. And our deck is definitely capable of winning on turn 1 or turn 2, as we've seen. So yeah, that's gonna do it for today. I wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.